Hello, investors and traders. Welcome back to Trend Trader Channel. Today, we won't be analyzing a specific stock, so no chatting for today. But for today, I want us to look uh, at this ETF that uh, Satrix is bringing onto Easy Equities. So I know that not everyone uh, is using Easy Equities as their broker. But for the purpose of this video, let's make the assumption that uh, everyone is using is equities. Anyway, I don't know which broker you are using. Uh, some brokers are more expensive, uh, have higher brokerage fees compared to is equities brokerage fees. So if you are paying a lot, I don't know why you are happy to pay a lot, but you should consider joining uh, is equities. And I must say, this is not a, a paid promotion by Is Equities. It's just that Is Equities is one broker that uh, allow us uh, retail investors to invest uh, at low cost. All right. So the ETF that I want us to look at, it's still in an IPO stage. So as we know that IPO, it's an initial public offering. So Is Equities would have sent uh, its client an email regarding this. I don't think this that uh, the email that I received yesterday was the first email uh, regarding this. They probably sent a communication before this one. Yeah. So the ETF that I want uh, us to look at is the Satrix uh, Kept All Share ETF. So I want us to look at how this uh, ETF differ from like, for example, the Satrix Top 40 ETF. First of all, the Top 40 ETF, it tracks the top 40 companies in the GSE. So those top 40 companies, the order that they are in is based on their market capitalization. So if a company has a large capitalization, remember that market capitalization is found, uh, if you want to calculate it, you multiply the share price of the company, multiply by the shares. Well, the, the shares part is a bit tricky because there's something called a share outstanding or shares that have been issued, that kind of thing. But you just multiply the share price by the number of shares, then you get the, the market capitalization. A company that has a large market capitalization is not necessarily a cheap or an expensive company, despite the fact that uh, we have NASPAS or process with their share price above uh, 1,500 rand. So I think NASPAS is over 2,000 rand. So for a long time, NASPAS before the unbundling, NASPAS has been the largest uh, company in the GSE by market capitalization. But like I said, that is just a function of uh, share price and uh, the number of shares. But if you look at the US, the largest company by market uh, capitalization is Apple, even though the share price of Apple is somewhere around 149 US dollars. But as you know, there have been a couple of shares, uh, share split and stuff. Uh, Amazon, it's over 2,000 rent, uh, not 2,000 rent, 2,000 US dollars per share. So as you can see now that uh, the market capitalization, as much as it is, it is a function of share price multiplied by the number of shares, it's not necessarily based on the price of the share. So like I said, the top 40 is based on market capitalization. Then we have the all share index. The all share index is just all the shares that are available on, on JSE. It's not necessarily the top foot. So the all share index will cover what you consider to be the blue chips that are found in the top 40, but it also includes uh, the mid caps and the small caps uh, companies. But then again, all of this is just a function of the size of a company based on market capitalization. So the ETF that we are looking at at the moment is based on the all share index, not the top 40. As we see here, it says that um, this ETF has an exposure to all the companies, but it gives uh, exposure to SA listed uh, companies. So like I mentioned, all of them, even the top 40 are still listed in SA, but this one, it's the all share. Uh, ETF that will cap uh, each individual company to at least uh, or to a maximum of 10% in the top 40. Well, there are some uh, capped 
top 40 ETF that tracks the top 40 but that are kept. The typical top 40 ETF does not cap. If NASPAS has 18%, they put 18% in NASPAS. If another company has a small percentage, they put a small percentage uh, into that uh, particular company. And then, like I said, this one, uh, it also includes companies that are found in the large, mid, and small cap in the GSE. So that's the advantage of that. So the reason why this one has an advantage is that it takes all the shares that are available on the GSE, not just the top 40. Sometimes it happens that the giants are not performing well, but because they are still big, then they still stay there in the top foot. This one that takes all the companies from the large to mid and small caps, then it's possible to have companies that are in the mid cap that are performing better, or companies that are small caps that are performing better. We'll find those companies uh, in this ETF as well. But also it does include the known giants such as BHP, Billiton, Richmond, and the NASPAS or process. As we know, we've seen a lot of uh, shape repurchases between NASPAS and process. So that one is just confusing everyone. Okay. So according to this, uh, okay, the IPO uh, came out on the 18th of October. So now if you have an easy equities account, you have up until tomorrow, the 29th. Today is the 28th of October, 2020. You have until tomorrow to elect to participate there. But before we go into that, I just wanted to point out that, um, so just that you keep in mind that the IPO is already going there. But now this ETF is going to list on the 10th of November. So if you elect to participate in this uh, IPO, you will receive a letter of allocation. And then when it lists on the 10th of November, then those letters of allocation will be converted into your ETFs. Whether you can buy this on your tax-free savings account or you can buy it on your normal uh, South African rent denominated uh, is equities account. So one thing that is interesting about this is this uh, targeted annual total expense ratio. We know that the total expense ratio is the fees that you pay uh, the fund manager for that particular ETF. We see that uh, they're targeting 0.25%. This is VAT inclusive. If you recall, uh, those who have top 40 ETF, the Citrix top 40, they will only pay 0.1%. And as far as I know, it's the cheapest top 40 ETF that is around. So 0.25, it's a bit expensive compared to the top 40 ETF, but we are not comparing uh, apples with apples there. So it's a different product. It depends on what you consider to be expensive when it comes to total expense ratio. Personally, I think 0.25 is reasonable, considering that uh, I think the property ETFs, Satrix property or OneVest uh, property ETF, they are somewhere around 0.29 and 0.3%. Uh, I'm not sure if they are VAT inclusive. Then the currency is going to be South African rent denominated. But something that I find uh, really interesting with this uh, ETF is the distribution period. So if you look here, they say that they will distribute on February, April, June, August, October, and December. So basically those are like one, two, three, four, five, six, six distributions. Normally we get about uh, four distributions per year because uh, most ETFs, they distribute uh, quarterly. There are some that distribute semi-annually and some that distribute uh, only once per year. But this one is interesting because they are going to distribute every two months. So if you invest in this ETF, you expect to get a distribution every two months. And then something that you have to keep in mind is the risk profile. As you see here, it's an aggressive, it's intended for those uh, investors that have an aggressive risk profile. So most of us are already here in that uh, aggressive profile. And then regulation 28, okay, this is an equity fund. So it's not a regulation 28 compliant. That has something to do with some pension fund investment and stuff. And then the number of indexed uh, constituents. So this ETF is going to have 139 holdings in it. And as you know that it's coming from Citrix investment, uh, that's the asset manager. The market maker, it's not something that you have to pay attention to, but Sunlam is what uh, will allow Citrix to make this uh, investment. So just a, a quick recap. This uh, ETF, it's already at an 
IPO stage, but it will be listing on the 10th of November. If you log in onto your Easy Equities account, you'll be able to invest there and receive a letter of allocation. Then uh, on the 10th of November, those letters of allocation will be converted into your ETFs there on the 10th of November. And like I said, keep in mind on the total expense ratio, the target at 0.25. I hope that they will keep it at that 0.25. They won't change it or increase it. And then again, the distributions, we expect six, six distributions per year. Every two months, we should be receiving something there. Okay, so those are the, just the quick uh, details about this ETF. And then if you look at the index that they will be using, they say that it will include the large, mid, uh, and small, small caps. And then also each uh, holding is going to be kept at 10% at rebalance. The proposed uh, holdings, we can see there, we have uh, CFR and BHP being the largest uh, position at over 9% each. And then the smallest at this moment, but in the top 10, it's a solid 2.1%. So as we can see from this, of the holdings, none is greater than 10%, meaning that uh, they are keeping to this, that they are keeping each at 10%. And for example, if the value of PHP group grows and then the holdings become, uh, become more than 10%, then they will rebalance the index to bring back a uh, PHP uh, below 10%. So that's something that you should uh, keep in mind. And then also we normally love to buy ETFs. Just check the top 10 holdings of this uh, ETF with the other ETFs that you're already holding in your portfolio and see if you're not holding the same thing. Yes, uh, others might argue that we, we're not comparing apples and apples, but if you buy a top 40 ETF, uh, maybe industrial ETF, and then you buy this uh, all kept, um, ETF, you will find yourself that now you are holding over 40% of BHP billeting. So that is something that you have to pay attention to. So let's look at the different sectors, uh, the sector breakdown of this particular ETF. This ETF um, is overweight on the basic materials. So there's an index that uh, tracks uh, basic materials. But as we saw that miners are there, uh, they are large positions within this ETF. So it's no surprise that the basic material is the largest sector. And then the smallest sector there is NH. Well, the, it's a bit tricky what falls into NH. For instance, Sasol, do we consider Sasol to be under basic materials or do we consider Sasol to be them uh, in NH? But another low um, sector there is healthcare. Well, in South Africa, we don't really have a lot of companies within the healthcare sector. The ones that uh, springs to mind, it's the hospitals like uh, Life Healthcare, and uh, Netcare, and uh, MediClinic. But there are some other companies that fall within the healthcare sector. Then the industrials, they are somewhere around 4.5%, uh, so it's not a lot. And then also we have consumer discretionary, which is a bit high. We have a lot of these companies in South Africa, like AVI, uh, Tiger Brands, uh, Messmart, the ShopRite, they all fall under consumer discretionary. Then in tech, they also have a 12.1% there in tech. So let's see what else uh, is in here. Okay, so who should consider investing in this fund? So this is for investors that want a broad exposure to JSE other than the top food. Like we mentioned earlier, it covers stocks that are, that are available outside the top food, like the mid and the small caps. And then also it has a lower concentration risk tracking uh, the all share index. So that uh, ALSI is for the all share index. And then compared to the all share index and the top 40, this one is, they say that it's going to provide the most stable and consistent uh, performing performance due to the capping uh, of 10% of each uh, individual company. So now how do you access this ETF? For easy equities, investors will find it under your South African rent account or on your, your tax-free savings account. But you can still buy it directly from uh, Satrix now using this um, website. So that's just about it. But I just want to make a few comments there. Right, uh, my concern is the large uh, holding of BHP billeting. I don't have a problem with uh, CFR. I'm bullish on CFR, but I'm also bullish on Sasol. But I see that Sasol has a weighting of 2.1%. 
I, I would like to see more uh, of Sassol there. I'm not necessarily that I'm very sure in this pass and process, but these two companies are not performing as great compared to first rent MTN and Sassol. So that is where I would like to see uh, them increase the percentage holding there. But then again, remember that the, the weighting is based on market capitalization. It's not based on performance. So yeah, Sasol is still uh, small compared to these other top five companies. And then also again, if you break down the sector, some of the sectors they've done well previously, but at this moment they're not doing very well. Like for instance, financials, I'm bullish on financials. I'm also bullish on real estate. Not to say that I'm bearish on basic uh, materials, but if you look at what has been happening in year 2021, we've seen a great recovery within the financial sector and the real estate uh, trust, but we saw uh, not necessarily decline. The mining sector has been just uh, moving sideways with some sector performing better than others. Uh, platinum took a huge hit there. But that is something that you should uh, keep in mind when you want to buy this uh, ETF. But then again, just keep in mind that it's based on the all share index, its weight using the market capitalization. So it doesn't matter which sector performs better than uh, the other sector. And then if you check here, the communication from Easy Equities, you see that uh, they're saying that they'll be launching this. It's in the stage of the IPO. And then now you can get this, uh, you can start booking your ETFs. So if you invest there at the moment before the 29th, or oh, okay, it's today, not 29th, it's the 28th of October. That's when you get that one letter of allotment. Then after some time, then that will be converted to, the, uh, to these shares. And they mentioned that this will be available on your uh, South African rent account or tax-free account. And then the good news is that there won't be brokerage fees. If you buy before the listing, not after the listing, once you buy after the listing, then you will be paying a brokerage fees. So if it's something that interests you and you want to buy now, you can consider buying it. Uh, just make sure that you vote today before 12 midnight so that you can participate in this uh, IPO and receive your letter of allotment which will be converted to your ETFs on the 10th of November. And the advantage of doing that now is that you won't be paying the brokerage fees when it list. So yeah, that's it uh, for today. I hope that now you have an idea of what this uh, Satrix kept all share ETF is all about. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the subscribe button and also make sure that uh, you like this video. I will see you on the next analysis. Thank you.